and welcome to the news on Enyimba TV. We are reaching you from about the commercial and industrial hub of other states, Nigeria. First, here are the top stories. Labor unions work out of minimum wage negotiations, blast federal government's 48,000 Naira proposal. Senate asks President Tinibu to start advocacy for full local government autonomy. Former Abe Governor Ibazu says 10 billion Naira airport fund was used for road infrastructure. These and other stories plus foreign business and sports shortly. I am Mary in Hejirika. Please stay tuned. The federal government is set to tackle the power challenges in Nigeria with an additional 500 million standard cubic feet of gas in the domestic market. President Balatinibu disclosed this while inaugurating three critical gas infrastructure projects executed by the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, Seplat Energy, and other partners in Ohaji, Ibima, Inimo State, and Kwale in Delta State. President Tinibu also assured citizens that his administration is stepping up its coordination of other landmark projects and initiatives that will ensure the earliest realization of gas food prosperity in the country. President Tinibu also reiterated his government's resolve to continue to provide support in deepening domestic gas utilization, increase national power generation capacity, revitalize industries, and create multiple job opportunities for economic growth. Catholic Archbishop of Sokoto Diocese, Matthew Coker, is calling on the federal government to communicate better with Nigerians amid the current hardship. Mr. Koka stated this after a meeting with President Balatinibu at the presidential villa in Abuja. The cleric told journalists at the State House that Nigerians are going through various levels of pain, which he described as unintended consequences of some policy decisions by the Tinibu administration. He said, though one year is not enough to assess the president, he, however, stated that the government should improve the quality of communication to Nigerians so that they can and get a sense of how long the hardship will last. Former Governor of Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN Godwin Emefile, entered his plea at the Federal Capital Territory FCT High Court sitting in Maitama, Abuja, on fresh criminal charges brought against him by the federal government. The four counts preferred against the CBN as governor border on illegal printing of Naira bills and unlawful withdrawal of funds from the consolidated revenue account. At yesterday's proceedings, the CBN former governor pleaded not guilty to the charges and prayed the court for bail. MFLA's counsel, Mahmoud Magaji, S.A.N., in the bail application prayed the court to grant his client's bail on set recognition or in the same term as granted by a sister court presided over by Justice Hamza Mwazu, where he is also standing trial on criminal charge. Labor unions comprising the Nigeria Labor Congress and Trade Union Congress have worked out of the ongoing minimum wage negotiations with the government and the organized private sector. Angered by the 48,000 Naira proposal by the federal government as the national minimum wage and the labor unions described the offer as ridiculous. NLC President Duadero explained that the government is not serious about negotiating with the labor on the new minimum wage. Ajero maintained that government have till the end of the month to arrive at a decision, adding that labor will take a decision at the expiration of the ultimatum. Trade Union Congress was pres represented at the meeting by the Deputy President, Mr. Tommy Ocon. For a week running, clearing agents have not been able to leave their cargoes from Lagos port due to an alleged severe failure by the customs internet service provider, which crippled clearing operations. With hundreds of containers trapped at these terminals, importers and clearing agents are gnashing their teeth and counting their losses as peppery dumarages swell. Shipping companies will naturally slam the owners with storage charges and so will terminal operators. Some of the freight forwarders accused them of incompetence and called for revocation of their contract as the Nigeria Comsons Internet Service Provider. Inyumba TV News learned that the same problem of severe failure occurred some time ago which led to mass protests. 
Senate has approved a $500 million World Bank loan request by President Bola Tinibu to procure prepared electricity meters for Nigerians across the country. The fund was approved by the Bureau of Public Enterprises after considering the report of the Senate Committee on Local and Foreign Debts. The approval of the Senate followed the presentation of a report by the Vice Chairman of the Committee, Haruna Manu. Enyimba TV News recalls that the $500 million loan was part of the $7.94 billion World Bank loan, which Tinibu sought the Senate approval for on November 1, 2023. Nigerian Senate is asking President Bola Tinibu to convene a national dialogue to deliberate on full autonomy for local government in the country. The resolution was a sequel to a motion sponsored by Kawu Sumaila representing Kanu South during the plenary. He said the dialogue should involve the governors, state legislators, local government officials, civil society organizations, community leaders, and others. Majority of the senators who contributed to the motion supported the prayers. Ifan Yoba of Anambra South said there had not been a local government election in Anambra State for over 18 years. Ojikalo of Abia North also supported the motion. Senate is urging the Inspector General of Police, IGP, the Chief of Army Staff and the Director General of the Department of State Services, DSS, to investigate, arrest and prosecute recent killers of the indigenous people of Nimbo community in Ozoani local government area of Enugu State. The Senate made the call following a motion to urgently curb the senseless killings and maiming of innocent indigents of Nimbo, Adani and some other communities by suspected headsmen by ensuring adequate provision of security. The motion was sponsored by Senator O.K. Chukwezia. The Senate also urged the Inspector General of Police and the Chief of Army Staff to urgently establish police and military presence in Ozo-Owani local government area to put a permanent stop to the incident killings. A fresh wave of resignation has hit the River State government headed by Governor Simina Laye Fubara as five more commissioners who are loyal to the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, Nyeson Wike, have resigned from the Governor's Cabinet. Those who resigned are Chinedu Mom from the Ministry of Education, Gift Wolu from the Ministry of Housing, and Jacobson Mbina from the Ministry of Transport. Ineme Aguma resigned as a commissioner for social welfare and rehabilitation, saying there is no room for progression and development in the workplace. Austin Ben Chioma also resigned as the commissioner for environment due to the political crisis befalling River State and other personal reasons. The five persons were among the commissioners who first resigned from the government from the governor's cabinet last December in the wake of the political crisis in the state, but we are readmitted into Fubara's cabinet following President Bolatinibu's intervention. The immediate past governor of Abe State, OKZ Basel, has reacted to an allegation that his administration diverted 10 billion naira earmarked for an airport project in the state. In an exclusive interview, Dr. Ikbazu denied the allegation of diversion of the fund into 32 accounts, but said that the accounts belong to contractors who were paid from the 10 billion naira for road construction project after the suspension of the airport project. He also said that the trail of the money should be followed, which will lead to the roads that were done. Abba State Governor Dr. Alex Oti has inaugurated the State Security Advisory Council and the Abba Security Trust Fund. The Security Advisory Council, led by former Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Azubike Onyabo Ihejirika, retired, comprises distinguished individuals with substantial military and security expertise as members. Members of the Security Advisory Council comprise DIG Uche. Ivy Okoronkwa retired, Mr. Ray Nkem Dream, Major General Ebel Obi Omahi retired, AVM Emmanuel Chuku retired, Major General J. Owa Obo retired, and Navy 
Commando McDonald over retired. Some of them spoke to Enyumba TV and affirmed their dedication to the crucial task of examining the security landscape to foster a conducive environment for all. You're watching Enyumba TV News. After the short break, the news continues with foreign business and sports updates. Please stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back and thanks for staying tuned. Now the news continues. We we'll start with foreign. South Africa's President Cyril Ramaphosa on Wednesday signed a controversial national health insurance bill into law just two weeks ahead of a highly contested general election. His ruling Africa National Congress is widely expected to lose its majority in parliament in the vote for the first time since the end of apartheid. The new law aims to provide quality universal health coverage to all South Africans, but its implementation has been met with opposition and skepticism. Among the concerns are that its execution will be undermined by widespread corruption and budget restraints which see the country struggling to fund basic services. Currently, 80% of South Africans rely on strained state-run public health services, while about 16% has access to private health care through medical aid plans. Public health facilities often have long lines and medicine shortages, and there are concerns about the affordability of the law and possible tax increases to fund it. And on business, the number of study visas issued to Nigerians last year dropped for the first time in three years, according to data compiled by Enyumba TV News from the U.S. Department of State. According to East Visa Office, the department issued a total of 7,466 non-immigrant F1 visas, down from 7,547 in 2022. Despite the decline, Africa's most populous nation recorded the highest number of student visas for the continent. The U.S. Consulate General in Lagos disclosed in that the consulate issued nearly 10,000 visas to Nigerian students last year and that the country sends more students to U.S. colleges and universities than any other country in Africa. And on sports, Abia Warriors moved out of the relegation zone after claiming a 2-0 victory over Rivers United at the Omar Hair Township Stadium on Wednesday. It is Abia Warriors' first win in 10 Nigeria Premier Football League matches. It is also the Omar Hair Club's first win over Rivers United in the league since April 2018. Samson will be open the scoring for the home team in the 64th minute. The striker rounded up goalkeeper Seidu Matawakilu before slotting the ball into the net after he was set up by Pascal Mwabweze. Meme Okike secured the point with the second goal in stoppage time. Abia Warriors, who, are now, who now have 44 points from 32 games, moved to 10th position on the table following the win. Rivers United remain in the 12th position on the table. The sports story brings us to the end of the news at this period. But before we go, here is a recap of the top stories. In the news, we told you Nigeria unions, Nigerian labor unions work out of minimum wage negotiations, blast federal government 48,000 naira proposal. And we also told you Senate asks President Tinibu to start advocacy for full local government autonomy. And we told you former Abe Governor Ibazu said 10 billion naira airport fund was used for road infrastructure. And that's our package of news for now. Please join us for more updates in our subsequent bulletins. Meanwhile, don't forget to subscribe to this channel on YouTube. Click on the notification bell to receive alerts when new videos are uploaded. Thank you for watching. On behalf of the production team, I am Mary Ihejirika saying thank you so much and do have yourself an amazing day.